Hi, I'm Toby, and this animated character is not me. I hate being in videos, but I know I need to do videos, so I'm experimenting with Adobe Express and some other software. I did some super old school, i.e. terrible stuff many years ago. Please ignore those. But this may be just as bad. This video series is called TLDR, or Too Long Didn't Read, as the kids would say. Basically, it's a bite-sized bit of information about food storage, mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, or freeze-drying. I did do a 23-minute talk about a bunch of topics a few weeks ago, but it's just too hard to edit that much material, hence the short format. Okay, I won't belabor the issue, so here goes. Episode 1. Why slow-acting, low-condensation oxygen absorbers are better, especially for freeze-drying, but for general food storage also. First, if you've been freeze-drying for any length of time and you follow the bigger Facebook groups or YouTube or Instagram, you'll have come across pictures of videos of jars of oxygen absorbers filled with moisture. Yes, moisture is bad for freeze-dried food, and yes, that same moisture can happen in your bags. How so? If your oxygen absorbers get too hot, you risk condensation, similar to it being cold outside and you turning up the heat in your car. As your absorber heats up and the warm air around it hits the cold of a jar or a mylar bag, you can end up with water vapor. This water vapor then is far easier for your agroscopic freeze-dried food to absorb. Not good. You've probably also seen videos of folks pulling out ruined freeze-dried food. Sure, it's possible that the food wasn't fully dried when it went into storage. It's also possible that condensation caused the ruined food. So what can you do about this? A couple of things. I always have a dehumidifier running when I open my freeze dryer and try to have the humidity at 40% of or below. I also run 3D printers and I use a dehumidifier for exactly the same reason. The filaments of a 3D printer are also susceptible to damage by moisture. The second thing I do is use low condensation, slow acting oxygen absorbers. So what are those? Basically, it's a type of oxygen absorber that reacts in a slow, consistent way over a full week. Most absorbers are front-loaded, and they burn quickly and absorb most of the oxygen in a package in a few hours. One of the side effects of these types of absorbers is they can get very hot, almost to the point of burning you depending on the particular batch. You can find videos online of oxygen absorber packages that were opened, but the absorbers weren't all used that are literally soaking with water and steaming due to the amount of heat put off. Slow-acting oxygen absorbers work differently. They are mixed in such a way that they produce a low-level, consistent reaction over the course of seven days. So instead of using, say, 60% of their potency in just a few hours, they use less than 1% of their potency per hour. This means they react much less strenuously and produce very little heat. Yay! That means little or no condensation. Now, that's the main benefit, but there is a side benefit almost as good. With slow-acting absorbers, you don't have to rush. If I have an afternoon food storage project and I open a pack of regular absorbers, by the time I am done four hours later, most of their potency is gone. Sure, you can open and reseal after you pull a few absorbers, and that's the best practice. However, with slow-acting absorbers, you don't have to do anything. I've left slow-acting absorbers out overnight, and they are still just as effective the next day, because even after 12 hours, they've only lost 10% of their capacity. Say I have a 300cc slow-acting oxygen absorber. Their normal actual capacity is around 900cc. After 12 hours, that capacity is still over 800cc, where a regular oxygen absorber is nearly spent and useless after 12 hours. Pretty cool, huh? So if you want to switch to a better absorber, head over to www.discountmylarbags.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know. Thanks.